Inside Science. From a simple, lonely melody to an intricate sonata. Sometimes it feels like music can speak directly to your heart in a language that you don't know, but your emotions understand. And that's because music is a language. The language of emotion. And I mean that literally. Music has structure, progression, and syntax, just like language. I mean, the brain even processes musical syntax using the same area it uses to process language syntax. And next time you hear someone speaking emotionally, listen to the acoustic characteristics of their voice. They'll mirror music of the same emotion. Fast, loud, and high for excitement and happiness. Slower and softer for melancholy. So, if music is a language, how does it convey its meaning? I mean, after all, it doesn't have any words, does it? Well, at the very basic, physical level, loud and fast noises excite us more than slow, quiet ones, because our brainstem is tuned to attend to these kind of noises in the environment. Oh! Certain chords sound pleasant, and because of how we divide tones into different pitches. Now, harmonically simple consonant chords, like majors, are easy to do this for. But harmonically complex chords, like tritones, are harder to distinguish, so we find them dissonant. But these automatic brain mechanisms are only the beginning of how we read meaning into music. And much of the emotional significance that we find in music comes from our own life experience. And whilst still in the cradle, we learn to associate the music we hear with the emotional environment that we hear it in. So, uh, a mother's lullaby might imprint us with calm memories for major keys. whilst a lover's lament in A minor would remind us of breakups, the next girlfriend. <laughs> Although it isn't always this way around. After all, Western cultures have a very different appreciation of dissonance to Arabic music or to Indian raggers. But we don't just sense the emotions in music, we feel those emotions too. How? How can it? force us to actually feel the same way. Well, one possibility is that once we've understood what the emotional content of the music is, it activates a population of brain cells called mirror neurons. Now, these cells mentally simulate behaviours that we perceive in the world around us. And that helps us with social understanding and empathy. In this case, they allow us to empathise with the emotion of the music, triggering the same emotions in us by activating the limbic system, the emotion hub of the brain. Another theory has it that the beat of rhythms and the frequency of sound waves actually drive the intrinsic oscillations of neurons in the brain. Different groups of neurons synchronize their firing at different rates, some slower, around one to five times a second, others closer to 20 times a second. And different rates are associated with different mood states. Through auditory stimulation, music could drive neurons to fire at a specific rate, as though our brains were resonating to a beat, and that sets our overall mood. But some of our most powerful responses to music come from expectation, tension, then resolution. 
But calculating something that complex requires much more of our brain's vast processing power. Humans are expert predictors. I mean, we're always trying to figure out what's going to happen next and why. As we listen to music, our brains are continuously trying to guess what's coming up based on what we've just heard and on our experience of music over our lives. And you can even see the moment that we've realised the meaning in the music by a spike in the recorded electrical activity across the brain. I knew it. <laughs> To make simpler harmonic melodic predictions, we use our auditory cortex. For more abstract syntactic and structural changes, the frontal lobes. And these areas are heavily interconnected with the limbic system as well, which both aids in processing the music and adds emotional texture as information loops back and forth between the regions with the ebb and flow of the piece. And using these circuits, our brains try to calculate what's coming next, and to judge the accuracy of those predictions, we use the brain's reward system, dopamine. A correct guess gets a little pleasurable puff of dopamine. An incorrect guess gets nothing and an unexpected, pleasurable resolution gets a great big burst. You know the thrill you get at a particularly beautiful musical moment? That chill that runs across your skin? You can predict when you'll feel that, from a rush of dopamine to the nucleus accumbens, a, a key node in the reward system. The nucleus accumbens then triggers the physical response that you feel by activating the autonomic nervous system. So why? Why do we become a musical species? I mean, no other animal does this. This is an evolutionary question that flummoxed Darwin and is still argued about today. It might be a, a great and lucky accident, a happy quirk of our brain's development that it can appreciate this complex integration of sound waves. Or maybe there is something more. Music is exceptionally good at provoking emotion, far more than language. Autistics, who have great problems perceiving emotion, can have their limbic systems activated through music. Communication of our emotional worlds through music could be as important for social cohesion as communication about the physical world is through language. It has been suggested that before music and before language, there was one mixture of the two, music language, that sounded across the savannah. That music language split and specialised into two different forms of communication, one for ideas and one for emotions. And whatever the reason is, our ancestors have been playing music for longer than any of us knew. Recently, a bone flute was found near the Danube in Germany from over 40,000 years ago. Music is in our blood, our bones, and our brains. For Inside Science, I'm Ali Jennings. Thanks for watching. Have a great 2018. Inside Science. If you enjoyed this edition, Follow us on the web and social media. Powered by the American Institute of Physics and a coalition of underwriters.